Are you either a god amongst men who leaves a trail of wet panties in his wake? Or do you look like one of those things that the fucking the orcs from Lord of the Rings all fucked up and disgusting? Or are you the one in the middle? <laughs> That's what we're gonna talk about today. Today, I got sent this video, the three tiers of men. Which one are you? This is from a YouTuber or ex-YouTuber, I guess, named Wheat Waffles. Uh, a moment of silence for Wheat Waffles, who is no longer with us. Well, his YouTube channel, rather. I believe there are three tiers of men. And to test this theory, before starting the video, I want you to play this quick game. One by one, male faces are going to appear on the screen here. And you have to decide which category of attractiveness they fall into, either Sub 5, Normie, or Chad. There'll be 15 faces in total. That's what I was gonna say, I was gonna put him right there in the middle, that's good average looking dude. Plenty of room to improve, plenty of room to disimprove, if that's a word. Let's start. One. Uh, good, good looking guy, Chad. Two. That's like a famous, that's like a famous model. His name is like H. Pedro, Pietro, something like that. I don't know. Free. I don't like this game. <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna rate these guys. That feels grimy to me. Um, So I'm just gonna let him do his thing. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This guy, the last one placed in the chat column. Good looking guy. Don't get me wrong, but he, he could use a little bit of Brett's jawline chewing gum to bulk up those master muscles there. That's the only comment I'll make on him. Other than that, he's a stud. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So, did you get all of them right? I think when the categories are broken down as simple as this, it all just becomes so obvious. Anyway, I'm going to explain the main content of the video now, which is breaking down exactly how I believe each distinct group interacts with all of the others within the dating market. The guys at the top of the pyramid, the so-called chads, they have complete control over the whole of the top tier and mid-tier women. A lot of these guys- Right there, I'm gonna stop with you. No one has more control than hot women. They control everybody. That arrow should be pointing the opposite direction. I promise you, the best looking guys are vying and desperately trying to bid and pursue the hottest women. They have all the power. They can go anywhere. They can do anything they want. They can get on yachts with Drake and rappers and NBA players and all this shit with a single DM. It's not that hard. No one has an easier life than a top tier hot woman but i also give the highest amount of respect to super hot women who don't have an only fans that's got to be like the craziest amount of restraint possible so shout out to those girls making an honest living um but yeah just want to mention that however i do agree with that second arrow pointing up yeah i mean usually these top tier guys can have pretty good success going after those mid-tier type of women those six six sevens eights eights and a half ish settling down as they have an abundance of both one night stand options and friends with benefits coming from these two tiers. I also want to point out that most of these options are sourced from online dating apps. If you haven't realized by now, it is these top 10 to 15% guys who are hoarding all the matches on Tinder. Yeah. <laughs> Just to, you know, reflect back on my, my glory days back far before I had my lovely girlfriend, Chloe, now. When I was on these dating apps, I remember I had Tinder and I purchased Tinder Gold. It was like, you know, unlimited swipes or whatever. And it had this feature where it would show you all of the girls that had already swiped right on you. So these were your potential matches for you to go through and either, you know, swipe right and accept and match or swipe, swipe left and uh, unmatch right. And I remember within a day or two of getting tinder gold i had over 10,000 likes so these were 10,000 people in my radius that had already liked me so already given me the potential to match with them and i don't say that to impress you but i just say that to impress upon you the bias ingrained in these dating apps so it's super duper duper advantageous to max out not only your looks as much as possible, but also your looks, your presentation on dating apps. If you need help doing that, uh, I do have a program down below. The 72 hour male model could help you within three days. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's insane the difference it can make from just standing out amongst everybody else, especially on dating apps. So it was crazy, um, but yeah, that's that's way in the past. I have a lovely girlfriend now and uh, I can guarantee you it's far better this way. So uh, let's continue. Two, 
For the women in these two tiers, especially the mid-tier, in return for what they're giving out, they are demanding relationships and commitment from these top-tier guys. However, the majority of these men are choosing not to cooperate as they don't want to settle with anyone below their level. I'm gonna have to stop you right there, Mr. Waffles. You'd be surprised at how many of these women in all categories are cool with whatever you're cool with. Like, the power of just being honest and upfront with what you're looking for is unmatched. If you tell her, hey, really just looking for something casual, and you say it, you know, in a non-predatory, non-coercive um, way, like you're trying to uh, trick her into thinking that there's potential to be more later on or you know anything like this most girls will appreciate you being honest and be like you know what i'm cool with that too but if you say i'm looking for a relationship she's not whatever shake hands moving along so i wouldn't say this is completely accurate you can if you're if you're honest and straight up you'd be shocked that probably more than 90 percent of women are cool with what you're looking for as long as you're not like some sort of creep and say something weird unhinged and blow it caveat to this though is a fair amount of the top tier guys are happy and okay with getting in a long-term relationship with the highest value women is that like some sort of you know aha moment yeah no shit <laughs> top tier guys want to be with top tier women and vice versa um let's not lie to ourselves and pretend that a top tier woman won't go for a guy that isn't a little bit less attractive because that's the only thing that they look at women are far less visually stimulated than men are we that's like the main thing we look at that's like 90 percent of our filtration sy system there's plenty of lesser than good looking guys who end up with the highest tier women for example emily rajkowski's ex-husband bear or something he even ended up cheating on her or shane gillis he's you know that comedian guy his girlfriend is smoking hot there's so much more that goes into it for women than just your looks and the main thing is your vibe that's it we can get into that later but let's keep it going men in the middle was unremitting desire to lock down a chad has a knock-on effect for the mid-tier average normie guys because in order for a woman in the middle to maintain her availability, it means she has to temporarily friend zone any non-chad guys that approach her. Which again, if you haven't realised by now, friend zoning is effectively the woman wanting to keep you in the background as an orbiter in case she starts running out of time and thinks she may miss out on her plans of wanting to start a family. In which case she can simply pluck you from orbit whenever she feels necessary. That's somewhat true. I'm not going to sit here and act like there's no advantage to being better looking. The biggest advantage to being better looking is just your barrier to entry is a little bit wider. So if you go approach a girl, it awards you another 30 seconds to, you know, stake your claim and make a good impression. Um, but after that, it's kind of like game on. No girl is going to stay with you and stay in a relationship with you unless she has a horrible self image and is extremely insecure. But like most girls, they're not going to continue seeing you if there's not that vibe, that spark, that that's something about you that they resonate with. So that's like the main thing that being good looking is good for so you can get with these girls and get them to date you but the barrier to entry is just a little bit smaller you got to work quite a bit harder five in the meantime these normie tier men become desperate for the women who are rejecting them on their level end up settling for the friend zone for which they then become a source of emotional support favors and basically a shoulder to cry on if you let if that happens that's your fault bro you have to make your uh, intentions well known you got to put off a flirtatious romantic vibe from the get-go like one of the easiest ways to do this is just from the very jump just say hey i thought you looked really good over here or whatever i thought you were really cute so that, that that makes it known like i look at you in a romantic uh man to woman way instead of just pretending like you're getting to know her on a friend level hey uh where's the closest library um hey, what's what do you do you come here often you know that type of shit you got to actually make your intentions known it's subtle little indications six one of the biggest if not the biggest market force both normies and sub five guys ferociously simp over the top tier women and in return these women give a grand total of nothing back because after all that is the very definition of simping a man mindlessly wasting his energy and resources on a woman for absolutely nothing in return that will benefit him the technical definition is suckers idolizing mediocre 
But, you know, I digress. You're, you're pretty much right with that. 7. A surprisingly large number of the normie tier guys, out of pure desperation, lower themselves to trying with the women at the very bottom for one night stands and casual intimacy. And the only reason they do this is because they've ruthlessly tried everywhere else and got no results. If you did that, that's on you, bro. If you are actually going out there and approaching and putting yourself in the game, you know, coach ain't putting you in the game, put yourself in the game, bro. So if you're actually going and, you know, taking action, I guarantee you're going to have some success. If you're a mid-tier guy, you're going to have success with mid-tier women for sure. You will probably even have some success with top-tier women. You're just not fucking doing it. None of these guys are doing it. Like, I think studies show that less than 25% of guys have approached a girl in public in the last five years or something like that. I'll have my editor put the stat on the screen, but it's surprise. It's like shockingly low. These guys get all down and bad about themselves when they're not even like doing anything. Of course, if you do less, you're going to get less. Do more. You will get more. Don't be a re- These low tier women in response become resentful of average guys for not wanting to commit to them. 9. I find this one the most hilarious. Women of all levels give the same treatment to sub-5 men, which is emotional reactions of disgust, pity and abhorrence if any of these guys interact with their lives in any way, shape or form. It's gone as far as where sub-5 men don't even get the luxury of being friend-zoned. Sub-5s are being outcast altogether. I think that's a little dramatic, disgust and pity. Yeah, maybe in some cases, but you're not completely wrong here. These these guys in the sub five category, barrier to entry is paper thin, right? That's just that's just the facts. Like you, some of you might slip through. You might get access to these higher tier women, but if you are really, really that far down bad, it is absolutely in your best interest to try to penetrate into the at least normie category. The power from going from like a two to a five is remarkable. You have so much more access. Your barrier to entry is so much broader. Women will allow you to like, you know, spout out whatever your little intro is and they won't cut you off or, you know, like act up. Uh, standoffish or anything like that so absolutely you're pretty much right there like you have to do everything you can to try to penetrate at least this average level there or else that window is pretty much closed you don't even have a chance to show who you are on the inside show your vibe show that you're funny show that you're personable and you're capable of having a relationship that's not awkward or weird or cringy or anything like that and finally 10 the only alternative for these bottom tier guys which again is the same for all three tiers of women is pathetically beta boxing to try grab hold of whatever they can get. For these guys, it's either that, moving abroad, having a miracle looks transformation. This isn't a miracle. This is highly possible, but most guys just don't know how the fuck to do it. They don't even know where to start or they try to do everything at once and then they end up spreading themselves too thin. They do nothing at all. That's why I recommend having some guidance. So get a mentor or if you can't get like a, you know, a one-on-one -on -one coaching mentor or anything like that, just get my program, the 72 hour male model. It's super inexpensive and has so much info. It'll blow your mind on how to glow up within three days so it's definitely possible or living in a basement forever playing video games all day anyway this is my breakdown of what i believe to be how each group interacts with one another within the dating market now moving on to answering the actual video title which is how to know which category you fall into sub five normie or chad well besides looking in the mirror in my opinion the number one way to tell which category you are in is how women react and respond to your behavior and presence. When you was at school, if you were the guy that every girl gossiped about, that all the girls had a crush on, you were a chad. If you were the guy who was also gossiped about by girls, but for the wrong reasons, for being a creep or a weirdo, you were probably a sub five or just really socially inept. Anyway, for the guys on either extreme, the treatment they receive is easy to evaluate. Were, were people really talking about that in like grade school and elementary school? I don't know if I made that up. Did he say that? Or does he mean like high school and university and all that? I guess that would be a little more relevant. Yeah, if you're like people treating you like a creep in college, then that's not a good sign. But I can tell you when I was younger, I was told all the time that I was like cute and like handsome, like more handsome than everybody else. I never knew whether to believe it or not. I've just figured every parents were telling them that. But um, I can tell you now that I also had some girls in the school telling me these type of things, but every girl that I really liked in like middle school, I just blew it. Like it didn't work out. I was 
was like, there's something wrong here. And that goes back to vibe. Like you have to be good at just being normal and like being engaging and not uh, too desperate or anything like this. So that is far more important than being good looking, just gets you the entrance, gets you through the door. But then you got to prove that you're worthy of actually staying in the club once you're through the door, if that makes any sense. But how about normies? At first, the answer may seem a little hard to identify, but I think I have a clean-cut answer to determine exactly if you're a normie. And again, it's based on how a group of girls will react to you. You will know you're a normie if out of a small group of girls, there'll be maybe one, at most two, that find you attractive. Meanwhile, all of the others will have a complete lack of interest towards you. How about some examples? Well, I've seen this play out in real life countless times. Whenever I hear girls argue about whether a guy is attractive or not, the guy in question is nearly always just some mid to high tier normie and he'll usually have some niche quality about him that sets him apart from other plain basic normies. This might be curly hair, a slightly geeky appearance or a gym obsession. And maybe I'll elaborate on this point about niche markets in a future video, because I myself have red hair. So I've actually found to be at the center of these debates of attractiveness. Yeah, this is something I've said in multiple videos. You should look at yourself realistically in the mirror and say, do I have the potential to be a uh, objective chat? This is the guy that the if you ask 10 women, nine women will say he's attractive, right? And if that's possible for you, you got to be honest with yourself, then you should strive for that. Do the things that a Chad would do to achieve that. Work on your fitness, work on your side part hairstyle or this, your you know uh your jawline your facial fat and things like these but if that's not going to be possible for you you should target more niche appeal so um things that might be a little quirky maybe you're the guy with the big nose so rock some more like you know alt type clothes go for a segmented category that digs that target those people if you try to target everyone you end up catching nobody if you try to target the broad spectrum but you're not the broad spectrum's target then you gotta concentrate your target anyway going back to the main point this normie treatment contrasts the other two tiers because for any guy who is a chad, there is no argument to be made. The consensus among any group of girls will be unanimous in which they all agree the chad is highly attractive. Actually, you might get one bitter girl who starts coping and deludes herself into thinking she doesn't like him, but in reality, we all know she'll only say this because she knows herself the guy is well out of her reach. That's pretty true. Sometimes it is true. I mean, that that whole idea. Yeah, that's pretty true. And you're right about the one girl saying that. But sometimes she's being honest. Sometimes maybe she just likes like black guys or super tall guys or Latinos or whatever. So who knows? But f her. meanwhile, for the guy on the opposite end, the sub five, again, all the girls will be in agreement. They will all collectively agree that he's creepy and undateable. Once more, no arguments to be made. Therefore, the unique situation of differing opinions only occurs for the guys in the middle. They are in the most flexible zone in terms of their perceived attractiveness. There's significantly more subjectivity at play for the guys in the middle than either of the guys at the very top or bottom. Some girls will find a given normie date worthy, other girls won't. And for this reason, this is exactly why I see so many normies out there that are completely clueless about where they actually stand and their true attractiveness. Half the time they get blinded by their own confirmation bias that because one or two girls over the course of a year has found them attractive, they then delude themselves into thinking they're an alpha male. Meanwhile, the other half of the time they realize at best they get two to three matches a week on Tinder, none of whom even respond to his opening message, and then the guy concludes he's unattractive. When in reality, in simple words as possible, it should be obvious you're a normie if few women, very few women, say two to five percent, find you attractive enough to consider dating. That's true. <laughs> that is so true, bro. So way too many guys are way too results based. They focus everything on the results that they're getting. If they're approaching this many girls and only one of them talked to them back or texted them back or whatever, they totally adopt that identity. They're like, oh no, I'm not attractive. And I used to be this way too. Or, you know, you have some success. You're like, oh yeah, I'm a, I'm a fucking stud. But really you need to be process based. You got to make that transition. You're in your process. Once you find a proven concept that works, uh, you know, certain text messages that work with, you know, the broad spectrum of women, mean the uh, type of uh, approach that works and just repeat this because once it's provable you just repeat it until you find the person that you want to you know spend the next 
part of your life with whether it's whether whether your goals are to have casual hookups you know more casual type of relationships or something more long term and just find that and run with it and don't get obsessed with the results so for me i know i'm a normie i've never tried to deny it or say otherwise the process has always been so smooth so easy no headaches and i've almost never found myself in a position where i'm having to read signals or check out part one and check out my see he gets it that's the whole video um i basically said everything i wanted to say i enjoy going over this video if there's other videos you guys want me to react to let me know and i'll be happy to do that leave your comments below um subscribe if you love your parents and until next time peace